Hello everyone, it is the Redman TV podcast. We are back after our very, very, very brief hiatus. Um, the Reds are back in trading and we are back in action. Uh, I am Paul Machin, I'm joined by Ross Chanley, by John Machin and by Ben Kelly for this one. Um, let's dive straight into it. The kickoff question comes from um, the RedmanTV.com subscriber, Jith, uh, who says or asks, uh, which failure out of the Man City, Man United and Barcelona European games did you get the most joy out of when the final result was confirmed? And, uh, we had a brief chat about like how good football was at the weekend. Um, <laughs> um, I hadn't even considered the, the, the Barcelona thing, to be perfectly honest, because seeing Man City and Man United get knocked out of Europe is always just lovely. Uh- Unbridled joy at seeing City lose. Absolutely <laughs> unbridled joy. Um, and Sparks was just sad. So, you know, I mean, I, I didn't get any great joy after seeing Messi, you know, just a, a, a ghost wandering around the pitch again, yeah. as he did against us. And Luis Suarez, you know, not not really setting the game alight. I mean, that that's all sad. Um, because um, Barca were absolutely brilliant in their day. Yeah, you know, they were great to watch. City, they're just jumped up nobodies, aren't they? And th- this idea that them and United were going to waltz through to the Super Cup together, you know, for a mank day out, I thought, you know, it was all nonsense, wasn't it? I mean, they've they've not really played anyone, and I mean, they played a real City played a Real Madrid side who were terrible. And beat them, and that suddenly they were the best thing in the world. Yeah, and they just got taken apart. Yeah, and you know, and you can't deny that they've got some good players, but they're also now losing the heart of the side. You know, David Silva and Fernandinho and um, uh, Aguero. You know, you're not going to be able to replace them very easily. So it was it was amazing it was genuinely amazing I, like i had i didn't I, I had the man united game on in the background i was in the pub on sun, sunday night and that was just kind of like i'd look up whenever whenever they conceded and it was amazing since suso as well was great um city i had that on to the side while i was doing something else. i didn't give them any of them, my extreme focus ross but that made them lovely in their own way it was just like a nice you know, sprinkling of, of you know, of a, a cherry on top, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I was in the middle of a family quiz with the footy on in the background and jumping up, <laughs> enjoying questions which have nothing to do with the family quiz. Uh, left them a bit confused, but same as John, I don't think he can put it as eloquently as he's just put it. But I think the Man City game, the fact that they were playing Leon, who was seventh place in, in Liga, and the fact that you know that on paper that team should have walked that game, you know, the way the story went, the narrative went of Sterling missing out from you know two yards or whatever it was for them to go up to the end and score was just kind of sweet justice. So I was I was hooked on that and I think that won for the final whistle. I agree with the Barcelona stuff. I, I, I get to the point where you, you kind of almost feel sorry for them of like, you know, what could have been. Suarez is a great player, Messi's a great player, a team that we, we, we've all grown up with, you know, dominating Europe and, and, and Spanish League just to kind of see how far they, they've fallen is, is nice in one respect, but also Nostalgia, you know, you, you do quite like him. I mean, Man United, similar to Man City, they played Astana, Copenhagen, you know, Mordor, nobodies. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and they were like, oh yeah, we, like John says, oh, we're, we're going to win this, we're going to walk this. They come up against a decent team and so they, yeah, it's probably their competition anyway because they win it every other year. You know, <laughs> just give it to them. And as soon as they play a decent team, they, they fall apart, which goes to show how far away they actually are from the likes of Liverpool or other teams around Europe. Yeah, uh, go on, Ben. What was it for you? I mean, it was it, it was obviously Manchester City. I think I'm, I'm in agreement with everybody else in the room. My Saturday night in the end was I finished work at like four, went for a few drinks around the docks, and then um, I went to meet mate Ewan, who's a Man United fan. And it's not it's not very often that we join together <laughs> <laughs> and we enjoy something quite as much football wise as we did. I mean, obviously in the end, I had a much better weekend than him because Man United got knocked out the night after, which was great. Um, but we, we'd had a few to drink and we were just like pigs in shit watching that Manchester City game. It was absolutely fantastic. Both of us just giggling away on the couch. So, yeah, um, easily, easily Manchester City losing to Leon. I bet you Wafer enjoyed that one as well, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't get me into all of that, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 
I love they come out like, oh look, oh you you UEFA, oh they got their they they got their you know their revenge. Like I'm sorry, but the UEFA had nothing to do with with that in any way, shape, or form. And trying to trying to point towards Laporte having his ankle brushed, like in the corner in the corner of the pitch, is being some part of a larger conspiracy is genuinely hilarious. No, I I am um, it's Man United aren't a consideration for me anymore. You know, in, in that way, and they are as much as I get joy from it. I, I do because I I really. I immensely dislike Manchester United, but it was it was a bit like I know Man United are crap. I know they are. Like and, and no amount of like Bruno Fernandez being the the heir apparent to the to Ed, Eric Cantona's throne and you know Ole being at the wheel and all all this positivity that they've had in recent you know recent months. It's a bit of a front. They are, so, and I tweeted this at, at, at the night the night. They are so obviously Liverpool in the nineties. It's like it's 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 untrue. The similarities there. They've got this great crop of young players who are, who are coming through, but and they've got they've got all the trappings there to to, to and the, you know they're, they're not so far removed from success that it doesn't feel like it's all connected to this recent era of success. But they are, and it, and you know and they've, I mean, got, that, they've, they've got a problem, haven't they? And that everyone wants them to be brilliant and the best thing in the world I mean they've now got the best front three in the world, I don't know if you noticed that <laughs> I mean, and that's what happens with the United, everyone is desperate to see them being united and yeah. they're not, they're a long way short yeah, and that's that's the thing about about it is that they've they, they, again the similarities to the Pool Ninety go deeper. They've got these, they've got some really talented senior players as well, but they're on far too much money. Big time Charlies who don't necessarily buy into what the football club's all about. There's lads who are on more money than they than they're worth, you know. Then there's, there's just the process to deceive, and again, and the manager's not good enough, and so I. Uh, it was expected for Man United to get knocked out. To be perfect, honest. I didn't expect them to win the Europa League. Man City, oh, like I, I thought they were a shoo I, th- I thought there was no chance they weren't winning. It. And the only hope was this all-conquering Bayern Munich machine, mm-hmm. uh, and the demolition of Barcelona made a big, made a big, a big case and all that. But like, yeah, the fact was that they didn't even get to that. The fact that they got beat by Leon is just, oh, oh it's amazing. And the thing is, I think we, we spoke about this yesterday, maybe it was on, on, the, on the European show, the fact that they won't get a better opportunity to win that trophy for me. And the Pep Guardiola with the squad that they've got in the format that the league's in against, you know, a seventh place French side, you know, okay, they'll, they'll struggle against the Bayern Munich side, but they're just not going to get a better opportunity to that. And we know that's what they crave for. You know, that's what Guardiola was was brought in to do was to elevate them to you know European royalty like <laughs> like we are and I don't just don't think you'll get a better chance than that yeah and I, I'm, I'm not sure where they go from here either you know like, like John says you know, we've lost a lot, a lot of important players but also you've seen the reaction something else that we discussed yesterday of what the culture's like at that, that club you know, Bernard Silva was still tweeting yesterday like fuck hell you lost two days ago <laughs> just leave it it's fine stop <laughs> yeah. it. move, it, move on I put the there's nothing more obvious than, than a person tr- when someone says they're not triggered by trolls yeah. is the most obvious touch point that someone is badly triggered by trolls. Like, you're not getting to me. You're not getting in my head. You think you're getting in my head, but you can't get in my head. My head's impossible to get into. So try all you want. Strict a troll, Liverpool, and you're bitter Liverpool, and you have a drink and read a book. Go and read your books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that oh, not like gif, isn't it? Going, I'm oh. fine. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It was just I hope, absolutely funny. I, I really but, hope for his sake that he's got a holiday booked. He he he, he just he needs to get away. He needs just to just take a break, Bernardo. Yeah, he needs. Yeah, he needs. He's, he's had a psychiatric break there. I, I, I we will talk about Liverpool topics. We've got the plenty lined up, of course. But I, I I just think this is brilliant. It's been the most entertaining part of the of the summer so far. The other and thing it, they've got is they've got Pep on uh, uh, the last year of his contract. And they, they brought him in to win the European Cup, the Champions League, and he yeah. hasn't won it for, yeah. for about ten years. Well, you you see these things, Dad. And I, I was talking to someone, maybe it was Ross yesterday or whatever, but the. Like, in fact, I don't know who it was, but anyway, Tottenham Hotspur reaching the, the reaching the Champions League final was the zenith of that squad. You know, that was as good as that squad's ever going to do because you've got a lifespan, you know, a shelf life for so many things. And City are in a fortunate position; they'll just buy and they'll buy great. They can buy. They, they they've got a greater chance of anyone of refreshing that because there's no one that they can't afford to buy. So like they might just go and buy Messi, and that, and you know, and, that, and he might be a thing like, like you know Juventus getting you know Ronaldo kind of thing like. It, but 
you mentioned it before there that there's <sighs> company's gone and they haven't they haven't recovered quite yet from 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 him going they moved Fernandinho out of DM and, and brought in Rodri and it hasn't quite worked out for them in, in the same way Jesus is really good and I think his goal returns actually it surprised me how good it was but he's not Aguero yet Phil Foden looks a real talent but is he David Silva he, he, he might be but t- right now he's not but to expect them all to be that at the same time you know, yeah. they, they all are going to take time to develop and to work with each other, to expect them all to do it right at the same time. Plus new players coming in. You know, if Messi comes in and Kula Bali and he, Harry Kane was the other one this morning, I read. You know, if they buy the best players in the world, it doesn't give you the best team. Mm-hmm. It just gives you a bit of a problem. Yeah, well, that's the point. Is that you've got to you've got to evolve those sides, and, and I think they've done it. You've got a reasonable it's you know, like chance Chelsea, of doing Chelsea it. Chelsea, there's a similar. You know, they've they've already bought two players who will expect to start, and they're talking about two other players who they will expect who will expect to start. Well, what about all those guys who? Dragged them up to the Champions League this year. You know how much dissent is that going to cause? Yeah, that's it. No, I think. No. I, I think Ben, Pep, uh, Man City are built in Pep Guardiola's image, and I think it's telling that when Pep loses his head, that side loses its head completely. They always fall apart when Pep. If there's ever, if he ever shows a sign of weakness or madness or you know being over the top, that side, that side goes. The whole club just just reeks of frustration for me. It's just that they just that you're right. You know, he was obviously brought in to win this this particular trophy, and they're not doing it. And they're aware that they're not doing it. You know, and and it's just becoming this obsession. And I just they're just not composing themselves very well with it. And you know, the way the other night he's obviously Sterling misses that real sitter, doesn't he? And that and that changes the game, which was fantastic. But obviously, you see you see Guardiola, you know, over over on the line, he just looks like. A man who, who just who just doesn't have, he, fe- he doesn't feel like he has control. Sometimes I don't yeah. know what it is. It just it, it's strange. But and it, and I think he's aware of everything that we're discussing now. It's the fact that he's got an aging squad. It's the fact that you know he's he's coming out of contract. Mm-hmm. He doesn't maybe he doesn't want to commit long term. Um, you know, there's other there's other prospects around Europe that I'm sure he'd love to go and have a look at. You know, Juventus is one of them. He keeps being linked with that. I'm sure I'm sure he wouldn't mind a crack at rebuilding Barcelona over there. You know what I mean? So. It's getting, it's getting, it must be getting to the point now where there's quite a few serious conversations going on at Man City about the future and what's going to happen next. You'll know that Man City have lost the plot when they bid for Messi. I think, you know, you know, like, and I'm not saying they will, but that's the most like there couldn't be a more obvious sign of desperation of like Pep bringing back the fella that basically, you know, was the, the greatest player ever, arguably ever to play the game. He had him in his absolute prime at Barcelona. He was pivotal to driving that side forwards. Like, I don't, I don't think it will happen, but it would be like th- there would be no bigger red flag for them them losing that and him losing his head. Than for Messi to be to, to come into that, but yeah, it's uh, I, I've enjoyed, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Have you got any, I, you I, know, loved, Ross? I loved uh, De Bruyne's stuff yesterday, where he basically said, oh, "Where we go again?" It just happens all the time. It's mm. different seasons, same result. Yeah, the Leon manager came out and said, "Like we probably annoy Manchester City now, so they go and spend another three hundred million pounds." You think I'm like pull, but managers like that? Yeah, they know what the score is because that's their only answer to things is to, is to throw money at it. Like, like John says, you can go and do that, but I think part of the problem is like they're the, the kind of full of egos. And we spoke about this yesterday again on the European shows. It's almost like an entitlement thing that they deserve. To, I think they thought they were in that, that final before they even reached it or semi final or whatever it was. And you know, don't put the hard work and you don't get it. No, I completely agree with that. And that was the mutterings, wasn't it? The, the City squad thought that the, the, the tactics were effectively his by his Bayern Munich tactics. Like he was pre- he was preparing to play by play Bayern Munich and you've got to get past got to get past Leon. Ah uh, we had a super chat coming while we were doing that. Thanks everyone who's 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 obviously taking in the podcast live at the time. Um Ashley Fritz had um Never had a better weekend without watching the Reds play. Seeing the two Manchester teams lose made us winning the make made us winning the league even better. Um yeah just just Brill. I've switched off from footy. I've got you know. I don't care to care about the Champions League stuff. I'm not going to dedicate any. I might watch the final if it's if it, if, it, if I think it's an interesting one. But like I, I'm, I'm enjoying my footy detox. But having that as a, like a nice little those little sub stories going on and knowing that yeah, the teams that I really dislike most have just fallen flat on the faces and they spend the summer. We're now 
like that they are that their season will start a week later. I think that I'm right in saying as a result of that. Yeah, it plays into our hands even more. Absolutely, yeah, it's great. <laughs> what what what? <laughs> What's nice I like about the fact is... that we're actually in training for the new season. Yeah. And they're, they're yeah. just, you know, getting off the bus back from um, Portugal. Yeah, absolutely. Go on, Ben. I was just going to say, well, I, just about your point there, I, I can now watch the rest of this tournament while relaxed. Because, look, at the end of the day, we're all really happy about Man City being knocked out because we didn't want, to, we didn't want them to win the Champions League. And now they can't do that. And there's two, uh, for me, there's two very interesting semi-finals ahead over the next two nights, and I can just watch it. It's a bit like the World Cup. There's no real emotional interest there for me. I can just watch yeah. a bit of football and get on with it, and it's quite nice. I wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind seeing Bayern Munich win it. I think I enjoy watching them the most. They play it's really good football. Um, and uh, but the point is now I can stop being stressed about Man City and Twitter if <laughs> if Man City were to go on and win the Champions League. It's, it's yeah. gone the way, hasn't it? Like Man City spent all that money for the Carabao Cup. Oli can't get past the semi. I mean, you know, he's, he's, that's, that's the record my United are breaking the first season to get knocked out of a, a League Cup, FA Cup and a European semi-final in one season. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's quite nice to watch, isn't it? It is. It's as soon as, amazing. soon as I recovered from Liverpool getting knocked out, I, I put money on Bayern to win, so I've got an interest to watch the rest of it. And it's nice, loved... nice to see the next country knocked out when Paris Saint-Germain don't make it that good. Yeah, definitely. I am... Um... It's mentioned actually in the in, in the comments here, Michael Smith saying, looking forward to Bayern winning the Champions League, should we get another 4.5 million from Barcelona, like the Coutinho stuff? And that's why I must admit, actually, that was probably what Jit's kind of driving at. There was a wonderful little sub-story with Barca where, you know, they, 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 they upset one of our best players. So we took them to, we absolutely rinsed them for 140 million for them, rebuilt our side, made them into the best side in the world. They didn't fancy him, so loaned them out to Bayern. He then comes on, scores two goals, gets an assist, and if the team he's on loan at wins the Champions League, apparently Liverpool get another four and a half million off Barcelona as part of his transfer fee. Oh, oh, like I mean, Michael Edwards gets another coat of fucking polish on his statue if that happens, doesn't he? And he'll probably play next season because Ron the Reds in charge now, isn't he? So he must be a fan of Coutinho. So like, <laughs> appearance fees, wins, so we'll keep them coming as well. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Just just absolutely fantastic. Uh, right, we're going to move on then uh, with the topics. Before we do, I just want to let you get everyone know who's, who's watching and listening to the podcast. We have got a brand new documentary series launching this Friday. Three episodes documenting the incredible run that Liverpool have had this season. Normally we do it in one big hit, but we decided to break it down. It's been such a good good campaign that Simon has literally been sweating uh, for the last month to try and throw this together. Three episodes they begin at 8am on Friday. Episode 1 is released on the RedmenTV.com. Episode 2 uh, at midnight, one minute past midnight the next night. So over three, the three consecutive days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday our documentary series um, on number 19 will be available. Uh, so yeah, if you want to go and get involved with that, highly, highly recommend. Um, if you've seen any of the previous documentaries we've done, you'll know the quality to them is first rate and size has gone above and beyond this time so yeah go, go and sign up to the redmentv.com uh, and you will gain uh, access to that series as well as a whole host of other amazing things uh, both in video form and in podcast form as well keeping you covered as the mighty reds the champions of everything uh, return to action uh, next week oh my god um right so let's uh, let's drive on then uh, but we were talking about barcelona i thought it was interesting uh, the um echo was reporting that suarez is being linked with a shock return to ajax um now it's, we're told ross that all but four of Barcelona's squad are basically up for sale. Uh, apparently, following the you know capitulation in the Champions League, I'm not saying like you know I'm not saying this is a, this is a defo or whatever. More of a flight of fancy. Luis Suarez, he's 33. He'll be 34 in January. He's no, he's not the Luis Suarez that we we sold. You know, he's, he's well past his absolute prime. He's got 36 appearances last year, 21 goals, 12 assists, which is better than any of our front three um, you know in terms of all round well actually it's not in all comps but you know it's as good as anything our front three was putting down last season for a 33 34 year old man would you I like you said I play a fantasy yeah I think in an ideal situation you'd love to have him in your squad again but yeah you know, he's, he's past his prime but also he's still a quality finisher 
you know, you can bring someone who's going to, you know, replace Firmino or fill in for him or come on for a substitute appearance. Someone's still got that gnarled grit, determination to get us over the line. Yeah, but also I think practically to get someone in for a season, two seasons, you know, longevity is that really the way forward? And what 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 are you what you're holding at the expense of getting Luis Suarez in your side when you can get someone in for the front three who I think Liverpool might go big for next season mm-hmm. instead of you know and wages and all that stuff on top of that? So. Fancy, yes. Real life, no. Yeah, I, I, I look. Yeah, it's it's a, it's an odd one, isn't it? I wouldn't be. I mean, Dad, I wouldn't be wanting Suarez to come in, and he wouldn't. I, for me, he's not displacing anyone. But if you would you rather have? I mean, it is a question for you. Is like Shakiri, a, a Shakiri and or a Rigi, or Luis Suarez. Oh, it's Luis Suarez every day, every day. <laughs> if you give me that choice, <laughs> but. Um, I, I wouldn't want Suarez back now. He's, he's um, it, it just brings so much grief with him. The press would be on his back all the time. They'd drag up all the old stuff, um, which I wouldn't want to get into again. I just think the grief would be too much. I mean, we've got a club which is happy and settled. We don't really need the baggage that comes with Luis Suarez, good as he is still. Mm-hmm. I think he'd be great at Ajax because, you know, if, if, he'd had, if they'd had him last year, they wouldn't have got beat by Tottenham in the semis of the yeah. uh, Champions League. They, they'd have been in the final against us. Yeah. He's that kind of a player. He gives he, he gives people who are good a bit of extra grit and determination. Yeah, uh, I don't think we need that. No, I, I mean the one side of it, Ben, is that I think the grit and determination means that I, I think <coughs> character-wise, I think he would he would naturally fit in with the Liverpool squad because I think you know he is. You're not seeing a drop off in in in, in levels in terms of levels and work rate. Bravin Luis Suarez tearing around your trade your trading pitch, um, but yeah, maybe maybe there is a little bit to that. Is I, well, I, I say this, I think there'll be natural, and I'm sure I haven't looked at the comments yet, but I, I'm certain there'll be people who naturally don't want him because he sell because he scored against us and celebrated against us, and because we did the fuck off Suarez thing at Anfield. The, what I, I, I I'm big into into old school wrestling, and I and there's a great thing in wrestling where. Like Vince McMahon or or whatever would say, like, is the money to be made there? And like, he might have had a fallen out with someone, and someone might have been a dickhead. But is the you know, is, it's business. And I wonder whether there is you know, th- th- there's a story with Suarez there that yeah, he is a bit of a bell end. Yes, th- there might be a, a, a hatred there, and maybe this argument could be made for Coutinho coming back as well. But if it's a bit, if if you can do business. This, you know, he's an absolutely top quality footballer. Maybe I think for me, I mean, to be honest, the, the thought of him scoring and celebrating against us hadn't even crossed my mind. That's just not something that comes into my periphery. But I just don't think. I think. I think he's. I think he's a bit of a prick. I, I, I just. I just don't <laughs> oh, think. Yeah, yeah. I just don't. I just don't want. I just don't have any interest really in him being. I think we've got a nice harmony in the squad, and I think yeah, I think John's right. All the baggage and the circus that he brings, it just isn't isn't what we're about at the moment. We're not. We've got a manager who's in control of every single situation, and I feel like I don't feel like Luis Suarez is somebody who would want to go along with that. I, I just feel like he's very much about himself, and he's very much. I just I just don't like the idea at all. I think I think we've moved on. I think we're better than. I think we're better than what we were when we had him. I don't think it's it's like going back to an ex, and it's like oh, when you when you don't need to, you've you've gone through the glow up as they call it. The kids are calling it yeah. these days, and you, then you're going to go back to the ex. You just don't need you just don't need to do that. I just no, nah, it's not for me. I mean, Klopp, Klopp got rid of Sacco pretty sharp. You've got knows what he thinks of Suarez. <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it? I uh, I, I there's a there's a very like. I don't know. I, for, uh, I I just wouldn't be asked. You know what I mean? Like I think there's a lot of people who are like, hey, but I've seen people mentioning like Suarez's past, and I've seen people bringing up the, the the racism side of things and all that kind of stuff. Like, and I agree. There's there's that there's that side of baggage that, that that comes with it. I mean, again, it's worth pointing out that you know for all for all those faults, like. Suarez has, had, you know, has gone on and had a career off the back of all the other things that the things that have happened, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't think I don't think he's in. I, yeah, he, he's. I think his issues often are over motivation on the pitch, whereas like you beat him off the pitch and he's the most like quiet, quiet spoken, pleasant fella. But on the pitch, he's just literally rabid at, at, at times. But I don't know. You know, you look at like. As far as a money ball signing goes, 
to get like a year or two out of someone like that. I don't know. I, well, I given what see, we've can... already got, given what we've already got, what you're getting for that money probably isn't going to be much more than what we've already got. So even if he comes in and he gets yeah. his 20 goals a season, we're getting that out of our front three anyway. And you're going to spend what? Even if you've got, how much are you going to spend for a couple of years? It just doesn't seem, it just doesn't yeah. match up, doesn't line up. Oh, yeah, me. yeah. I mean, again, it, there's, 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 yeah, there'd be mitigating circumstances. I don't know what he would demand in wages. I don't know what he would demand in transfer fee and all that kind of stuff. But I'd rather, but like, I think of as another example of this. I think about Man United signing Michael Owen, and it wasn't necessarily because they wanted Michael Owen, the, the prime Michael Owen. It was the value of having someone that good in your squad. And what did that value bring to Javier Hernandez at the time, where you're turning around and go, yes, there's, there might there are bad habits that Luis Suarez might pass on, but no one talks about the bad habits that Suarez has got when he's. He made Barcelona the best team in the universe. <clears throat> he, you know, it's... Had, he hasn't had any bad habits while he's been at Barca, yeah. which would suggest that they were all, you know, for a, for a purpose. <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah. point, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, balance. Okay, well, we'll move on from that. Um, Charles. Um, yeah, uh, right, okay. Uh, ben, speaking of young, young you know, Liverpool's forward line and what have you, you want to talk about Ryan Brewster? Yeah, I mean, you know, who would you benefit want... massively from um, yeah. <laughs> Luis Suarez? <to> <laughs> well, if you want somebody to sit just behind Brewster in the pecking order, then by all means, Luis Suarez can come in. Um, yeah, obviously, the, I, I mean, every single week when I come on this pod, Ross asks me for a, a topic, and I just have no idea what to talk about. And then when I woke up this morning, this had hit the news, and I felt like I'd been saved. Um, but obviously, it, the news this morning was that Ryan Brewster was is is being linked with another move away on loan. Um, I. If it wasn't for the pandemic, I'd really, really like this idea. Um, but obviously, with every season that kind of goes by, you know, we see, we talk about Origi all the time and, and probably what he's not offering. Um, obviously, Brewster went and did it at Swansea and did a really good job. They made a playoff semi final. Um, and, you know, we got in the second leg of the playoff semi final. Um, so, you know, he's definitely got the quality down there. You know, I'm pretty, he's passed that check. Um, so now whether or not, the question really is whether or not he belongs in our squad for the next season or whether or not he belongs in a Premier League squad somewhere else next season. Um, and again, I think it's really, really difficult because I, I think under normal circumstances, I'd just keep him. Oh, sorry, no, under normal circumstances, I'd loan him out and let him have another season. He's dead young, you know, go out, have a season at Newcastle or Villa or wherever. I think there are a couple of the clubs that have been linked with him, play every week and get that experience. But given that, I'm not convinced we're going to sign a striker. In fact, I'm almost pretty sure that we're not going to sign a forward in this window. Maybe it's just worth keeping hold of. Yeah. Um, it's been reported by The Echo. Um, Villa, Newcastle, Burnley, Brighton, Crystal Palace and Fulham uh, for Premier League clubs have reached out. Norwich, Bournemouth, Watford and, of course, we know Swansea with having back as well. Um I, I think, I, I, think I, I think I agree with Ben, to be honest, Ross, is that, at least for now, I'd be looking to give him an opportunity. The, the transfer window doesn't shut till October. You've got the first, it gives you the community shield plus the first month, you know, or first, what, three odd, three odd weeks of the seat of the Premier League season to have a little look, to have a closer look. And I think you can, you've got time to make a decision on Brewster. Yeah, I think it's really difficult. Ben says he's passed the, the championship test, but where to go from now? I, th I think it's, I'd love to have him round, but also where's he getting his game time? You know, you've got Shaqiri, he's reportedly going to stay, Origi's going to stay, Minamino's in that front, and then you've got plus, plus the front three. How much are you hindering a, a, a Brewster, you know, for his development? What, where's he going to get his game time? We still don't know what the layout of the League Cup's going to be, if there is going to be a League Cup next season, or, you know, what the Champions League format's going to be. Where's, where's he going to get those games? I, I think it's, it's okay to loan him out and, and say go to a Premier League club because you'll get loads of game time. All those clubs that we mentioned, he probably starts for all of them, and he, you know he gets his development in in that way. I think if Origi was to leave or Shakir was to leave, and you got another spot in that in that front in the forward line, I'd say keep him. But mm -hmm. I just think he, you know struggle to to keep someone around and keep him happy as well. Yeah. You know he'll have gone to Swansea and gone actually I've just proved myself there. Why am I sitting on the bench or not even making the match day squad to sit and train and then not not do anything? Yeah, Ben. I think he would be. I think he would be a great fit for Newcastle. Um, I think that the the forwards they've got at the moment are absolutely garbage. I think he would. I think he would get them so much time there. I think he's. I think he's better than Joe Linton, and I think. I think he's. He's probably. I mean, I. 
I think Almiron's a little bit better than Joe Linton, but still not as good as Brewster. And suddenly, you, for them, from their perspective, you've got somebody as quick as Brewster. You've got Shelby sitting deep to play those balls. I, I, th- I think he would fit right in there. I think, he, I think, he, I think that would be the best. I think that would be one of. I think that's where, if I was going to send him anywhere, I think that would be a good, that would be a good shout for him because they've just got no, they've got no decent recognised strikers. Yeah. I think I think you've made a really good case for him not to go to Newcastle. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, I, I, it, it's got to be the right fit, hasn't it? I think the understand the, the the Swansea fit was so good because I, I forget the name of the manager off the top of my head, but he was he was Brewster's manager for the England under 17s wasn't he? Is it Steve? Is it Steve Cooper? Am I right? So anyway, doesn't That's matter. Right, yeah. yeah, but the you know it's, it's someone who understands him who knows how, how to get the best out of him. And I wondered that because you were saying we, we've got a little bit of time to look at Brewster, but you know, he's going into training alongside Shakiri. He's going into training alongside Origi, alongside Minamino. Um, and I, I wonder whether there's like a cop running a rule in that in that regard. Because we don't know about Origi. We've had lots of chats about Divock and about whether we've gotten them or we're ever going to get out of them. Now, they're not, I don't, they're, they're not like for like. Um, so it might not be as simple as all this, but there are only so many places, and you know, and there's only so many minutes that can be can be dished out during the season. And I just wonder whether there might be a case of, you know, yes, we're running a rule over Brewster, but it might be alongside Divock as an example, or alongside Shakiri. And you get to September, you got a week. The end of September, you got a week left of the transfer market, and you go, okay, well, someone's coming with a 15 million pound bid for one of those other lads. Brewster's actually been outperforming them in training, and in the and and in this time so far, that might be part of the decision process. It's difficult to know, and I'm sure the club will do whatever's best. You know, I, I don't have any strong feelings either way. Um, and I, I knew that when I saw him before he went on loan, he wasn't re- ready. Basically, uh, he's had a great time out on loan, um, but at a lower level. Uh, maybe going to another Premiership club will help him. I mean, he's playing, as you say, he's playing in in training against Shakiri and Origi. Both of them are terrific footballers. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's not he's not going to look at them and think I'm better than them because they're both very very talented. And if one of them, I think Ross is right, if one of them had gone, then yeah, there's a slot and Brewster would would be the man. I don't know. I mean, because Minamino's there as well, of course. Yeah. He's under study in Bobby, probably. So there aren't many slots in there at all. So I remember Sturridge went out on loan from Chelsea and sort of made made him, really. He suddenly showed what, how good he could be. Yeah. Um, and that's what you'd like to see from Brewster, is his go and make it impossible for us not to include him in the squad next time around. If there's ever been an opportunity, though, I guess, Ben, is that it, it is now, it is this season, it is that environment where... The games are going to be a lot thicker and faster. There might just be a better case for two two seasons ago. We had Sturridge and Origi, under you know under study in the, the front three, and neither of them were necessarily the correct answer. But we had, but we. I wonder whether this season might be the case of do you give is Bruce the better play in thirty eight games for a, a Villa or a Newcastle, or is he actually better off playing ten to fifteen? For us, and because you might find that he becomes look what happens. Sorry, look what happens with the Origi Sturridge thing. Sturridge starts the season as the first backup, and then by the back half of the season, Origi comes in and he ends up being the cult hero for that season. You could flip that this year, whereas Brewster might start the season on the bench, but he could be. You know, you've got the opportunity to kind of come in and usurp Origi as time goes on. Yeah, I think I do agree. Obviously, the game's coming thick and fast, but I think as as Ross alluded to before, we don't. We don't know what's happening with the League Cup, particularly in the first half of the season for us. I mean, the League Cup is going on. I think the draw's been made this morning. But for us, we don't know whether we're going to be involved with that. So suddenly then, you're back to, yes, the games are coming thick and fast, but every single game fucking matters. And it's like, so suddenly then you drop in a 20-year-old in, or I don't know, however old he is, a 19 or whatever. And it's like, yeah, 20, so, so... you know, and he could just hit the ground running. He, the, the Swansea loan might be the way that you know we've all seen. He's got his confidence up and he's happy to go and all that. But at the same time, are you really going to drop him into a crucial Champions League group game? Yeah. At, at this stage, probably not. And those Champions League group games are going to come. That I've seen the schedule as there's, there's, there's every week, and it's yeah. like it is difficult. It's difficult. Go on, Ross. I think you've also got to think about wages as well in this scenario. You know, we've mentioned the amount of slots that there are in that position. 
you know, again, Liverpool still hemorrhaging money because of no one's, there's no fans at games. Can you afford to keep a 20 year old who's on, you know, whether it's a low amount or not? You know, you've got to, got to cut your costs where you can and, and try and save money. If you can go out and get go and get a game experience and it's saving you 20 grand a week or, you know, whatever you, you may be on, I think you've got to look at the, the business perspective of it as well. Dad? I just, I just uh, wonder how much more you develop if you go to a side where you're playing every week um, rather than, in, say, a League Cup where you're playing a Cup game every now and again. Yeah. <clears throat> I think you're better off going out to a team. I think the issue is we don't know how good he is. No. That's the problem, is that <laughs> he's so highly rated that I think the, the idea, I think I think he's he's probably, if he's so highly rated, he should be good enough to come and play in this squad. Not you know He's not going to come in and start, you know, Bobby Firmino's not getting kicked to the bench for, for Rian Brewster. But if he's a generational talent, which is what he was being talked as, then he should have no problem. Being in and around the squad, and he should by the end of the season he'll he'll be getting his he'll be getting his game time. The problem I have with young forwards going out on loan is that you'd only get one opportunity to to burst onto the scene, and things have changed slightly. You know, and, and this isn't the this isn't the late nineties, early noughties anymore, where you know you come in at seventeen like a Michael Owen or or sixteen as a Cesc Fabregas, and and then you just in forever. I think I think you can warm into 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 squads a little bit more now, but I. I I think if you send them on loan to it to the Premier League, I'm not sure that it, it, the experience might do him well. But I, I, my feeling on the Swansea one was I think he needed he needed to play some senior football just to get himself up to speed. It's my gut feeling on it anyway, and that was the only way they could get him to do that. I, I my hope and my, I think I think Liverpool are thinking with him is that he's ready. He should be ready now. He might not be. He might, he might go. He might need that extra season on, on loan, but I think if he is ready, I think they'll give him they'll give him opportunities because if if he again if he's if he's at that level, he's at that level. You know, it it it, it kind of it kind of is what it is. But it's exciting, if I, you know, to have someone like that to have a young talent, and we'll know more. You know, we only judged them on preseason. They're great in preseason last year, but as you, as you said, Dad, when he came into a couple of senior appearances, he did look a little. A little lightweight, a little, a little bit out of his depth. He's got a big injury as well. To be fair to him, you yeah. know, he's recovering from that, but at such a young age as well, to cover under the pressure and the height that you said, maybe you know he's getting back to his, his best levels now. Well, we said about it, like Oxlade Chamberlain came back in after a year and a, a year out, but he'd been he'd had ten years as a senior footballer by that point. He was just refining his level. Bruce there had that level of injury length actually a bit longer and was trying to come back into a level that he'd never played never played at before so again I'm, I, I'm actually making a case one way or the other it depends how you want to take it that could just as strongly be for him going out on it and doing a Premier League loan but I would like him to be good enough to play this season I think is the point I think we'd all be buoyed by having you know it's great to see Trent it's great to see Nico it's great to see Curtis Harvey Elliott but having a, a lad who scores goals there's nothing quite there's nothing quite like the thrill of having a young lad come through your squad who's got that capability. I do think that, um, I, I, I think it's worth clarifying that I do think he'll play for Liverpool eventually. Like, I don't think this is going to be a Harry Wilson where we just keep loaning and loaning and loaning him. And actually, now we're in a position where I think we'd all rather just sell. Um, I do think, you know, it will be this year or next year. And to be honest, I think maybe given the circumstances, you know, the games are coming thick and fast, going on loan and having to play under that pressure and actually being a focal point of a team and playing that many games will probably be more beneficial to him than playing the odd game in a Liverpool shirt. Yeah. And I think it's difficult and the reason I have sympathy with Origi as well for if Brewster was to stay to play five, ten minutes in a game or not play for ten games and then play one you've got to be able to turn it on and yeah. hit the ground running like Ben says you know, every game must win. That pressure or as a striker particularly to, to have confidence and, and rhythm in your game is important. I think he needs to go and establish that uh, Premier League club first before he's... It's levels of motivation though, isn't it? Is that Divock Origi, has he become a lord of diminishing returns and, and can he continue to do that role as a senior age player? Do you get the same levels of motivation? Whereas do you get Brewster who's just desperate to be on the pitch? Do you get more enthusiasm and stuff out of a young lad coming in in those times? And he's still young enough that it's actually, it's still beneficial to his development. That's the that's a very fine tipping point, I think, this season, which is why it's actually not as cut and dry as, oh yeah, give him a loan. Or, no, definitely keep him. It's 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 going to be different. It's going to be something we, we, we could try loaning him out till January. 
Mm. Let him get some experience. And San Origi might, by January, might be a bit fed up, not playing often enough. You know. I don't know what the rules are with loans anymore. I think I, I think you'd have. I don't think. I think if it's a Premier League loan, I think it's got to be a full season. I think I'm right in saying that. I don't think you can do half season loans within your own league, but I think you might be able to do it in, at, at the Championship level, which is another again is another a factor for consideration. But yeah, let us know what are your thoughts on the Brewster stuff in the in in, in the comments. Well, um, going to Brighton. And they give us Ben White in return. Sounds. Well, there you go, Ross. Cracked it. Ross Edwards over here. Well done. Um, Ross, what what do you want to talk about? Uh, Just Liverpool's new season. Um, I think we're all in uncharted territory as are the Liverpool players of uh, winning a Premier League. Uh, I just want to know how they motivate themselves or how you think they will motivate themselves to to go again. And I've suggested in, in a topic that maybe the fact that they didn't get to win the actual league in front of fans maybe an inspiration for them to, to kind of go and do it again. I think it's exactly that. I think I think that I think the team talk on the first day of the season from Jurgen Kopp is very simple. It's just all of that that you just did, we can do that again. But imagine that with fans and they'll go, yep, yeah, and then we'll be off again. I think it's I, th- I do think it's that simple. I think if there's any question of you know because there's a few of those lads now who, who, they've won everything you know they, you know if, if you've won the Premier League and you've won the European Cup and obviously the bits and pieces the Club World Cup etc you can safely say I've achieved all I'm ever going to achieve at Liverpool where's me do I need to go and try to ch- test myself elsewhere and I think for those players that might be that is the factor there where you say to Salah or Mane if if, if either of them are getting itchy feet <coughs> I just thinking oh, I wouldn't mind going and doing it with a Barca or a Real or a Juve or a Bayern or whatever they go actually no I, I kind of I kind of want to experience I want to be able to put the Champions League and, and everything we got with the Champions League and the celebrations together with the league title and, and have one more and I've maybe have one more of them um, but like and the motivation thing uh, Dad, is interesting because I think we we come at it from this angle of because I think we know that we all naturally still have, maybe not maybe not you because you, you live you've lived through us being a hyper successful team but I think our, 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 our younger generations we've got this like well how's it all going to come apart because that's normally what happens when we get near the top is that you know you, you're waiting for the for something to go wrong whereas top teams elite level football teams they don't need motivation. They are just most success is drives it. Success is like a hunger that is never is is a never. You're never satiated by success. You always want more. Well, um, if you look at the history of sport, you'll see that you know athletes, whether they're footballers or, or, or other kinds, they win things and they win things again and they win things again because they're driven by not you know by being the best and not having someone take that crown from them. Yeah. You know that's why teams win. You know, the European Cup, the Champions League three times on the bounce. It's why, you know, um, people in athletics break record after record and keep going. I mean, everything I've heard from our players after after our win this year was saying that's only the start. We, you know, we all want to, and they're all saying the same thing. Yeah. We want to win more trophies because that's the only way you can be judged. You know, and I think Klopp has got that mentality into them. Yeah. But he, he goes on a lot about this squad and he sees them as being very special and we've talked in the past about how difficult it is coming second in a in the uh, Premier League to then motivate yourself the next season well this lot didn't have any problem motivating themselves at all did they they just got even better and mm-hmm. so I I, I don't think they'll need motivating I think they'll want to win everything I think they'll be a bit pissed off if the, they didn't actually win the Champions League yeah I, I, they'll want that's to do it. that again well, you, you look at the um we reference it a lot because it was the biggest documentary, a sports documentary of, of, of recent times in the last dance. And you, you know, when you, you hear Jordan and that talk about how they want to go out, they want to, uh, to go out and defend their crown. They see it as their as theirs to lose. Um, I, I, that's the thing, isn't it? Better, I, 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 and it's hard to tell from photographs in preseason and and and, and these kind of things. But again, that's the that's the we if we're as good as we think we are. Then I, I reckon that could be like you know again we, we could be looking at a team that's dominant for for a couple more years at least. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, I think even for me as a fan, I, I always see, I always thought like because obviously growing up, like the Premier League was the one that we could just never win and all of that, and I always thought, well, when we've won one, 
that'll be like the itch scratched and I can just sort of relax and not. But no, I, I don't know whether it's because of the pandemic and that's part of it, but I'm desperate to go and see us win it again and, yeah. you know, have those memories. And, you know, for whatever reason, I think over the last two, two, two or three years, um, you know, the Manchester City side that defended the title, um, well, the season before last, even though even though Liverpool won the league by so many points this season, you still see people say, oh, well, Man City are the best team. Man City are the best team in England. And I think that will add fuel to the fire for the players because they, if, if we go and defend that title, then there really is no arguing about who's been the best team in England over the last few years. For me, it isn't already. You know, Liverpool have, have won the league by, 20, uh, by 19 or whatever points this season. Um, but but you know to go and defend that title, I think would really cement themselves. There was a there was a there was a section on Monday Night Football a few um, a few months back, and they were they were ranking the top English sides ever, and they went all the way back to the Liverpool sides of the seventies and the eighties, and they included some Man United teams in there and all of that. And and Liverpool players now really have an opportunity to put themselves on that list, you know, in terms of this this period now from two thousand and eighteen to potentially two thousand twenty one. You know, that that three year period where if you could if you could win yourselves a couple of league titles and may you know maybe a, maybe another FA Cup or you know or even a, you know another European Cup you know, there really is no debate over yeah. you know, your your status in English football forever. We're talking about Ross. We've been talking about Barcelona. This is this is still people still link this Barcelona side back. Got how many years? We going back ten nine years. years still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine years know. is that Wembley final. Yeah, you know, you know, obviously Suarez comes in a bit later on. Messi's there the whole time, but you know, we're talking about a Barcelona side that okay, yeah, look, they got dicked everywhere by by Bayern, but they they were contenders for the European Cup, and they're well they're well past their their prime. And I know they didn't win the league this season, but they never they can, they're still contenders at the absolute top because they've got that that win. The, the legs might not be there, but they've still got the winning mentality. This squad is in its absolute prime it would be it would take something shocking for Liverpool not to be in in contention for the biggest honours again this season yeah and again they're, they're all long term contracts they're all in together you know, Ben mentioned the camaraderie between and the unity that they got got in that squad and, and it was a subject that John wants to talk about in a minute of, of the managers being there for, for a good few years still you know it, it all points towards good things I, I think the reason I asked the question was because as a fan, well, I've never won a league before. Do you know what I mean? I, 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 I understand why certain sections of the fan base are going, like, we need to go and make this sign, we need to go out while we're on top, because, you know, as we mentioned, City will just go out and go, go and spend money. I think there's concerns that people will, will catch up with us. But I think, again, as Ben says, the gap is that big. And, you know, we've got players in our side that are young. You know, a, a Trent will only get better, Robertson will get better, Robertson will get better because he's got someone behind him now, give him, give him a kick up the arse. So God knows what level, like, that he might get up to. And again, you know, it all points towards of doing things on and off the pitch where Liverpool just improved in everything going forward. So we've never had this period of domin- dominance in my lifetime domestically. So maybe it's not a question of how how, how Liverpool handle it. Maybe it's how, how the fans handle it. Well, this, the motivation side of the things we haven't even discussed yet is... Look at the play, like you actually mentioned it there. Costa Simicast coming in is is it that motivation for Andy Robertson? That's that's it. Tells Andy Robertson he can't he can't let up. You know he can't give an inch. Otherwise, there's a lad who's going to take his place. You know you're bringing in. You've got these young lads who've all been blooded in the in in the post lockdown football. And Nico Williams is talking about my job is to give the manager a you know a a, a, a question you know about him and you know to give him a, a give him a, a decision to make over the right back which is mad you know you know for someone to come in and have that attitude. Curtis Jones already thinks he's the best player in the world, so he's going to be going out and trying to prove that every time he steps up on the training. Bruce is going to be coming back and, and doing that. There's motivation within that that squad, and if you can add. Another player or two. Let, I mean, I, I, we, we've almost got an entire show without mentioning Thiago, but you know, it's, whether it's him or not, bringing someone else in who brings other skills and other stories and all that kind of stuff. They're the kind of things that bring you bring your squad on. There's loads of reasons why Liverpool should should be motivated for the new season. Uh, at least the ball a chance to win another pl- a plate that they've not won before next week. Um, Dad, you want to talk on it? Whether it's a, 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 a sombre note, no, or whether it's a, a, a something else, you want to talk about Klopp's future? Well, only that it's sort of big news that he's announced that after at the end of his contract in 2024, and it's a long way off, thankfully, 
uh, he's going to have a year out. And at the end of the year out, if he hasn't missed football, he's going to give it up altogether. Yeah. I just wondered whether people thought, one, he'd be able to do that. <clears throat> and two, whether it would be a big mistake. I mean, I always remember when Shankly retired, which was a real shock. Within about three weeks, he he changed his mind and he wanted to come back but it was too late yeah. and Dalgleish when he left he said that after he left in whenever it was 1990 or whatever that if they'd asked him two weeks later to come back he'd have done it Yeah. and I just wonder whether we we can give Klopp some advice about how he should <laughs> behave in four yeah. years time I, 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 it's right there what you've just said you know two of the greatest managers to ever you know be at this club thought exactly the same thing but I also do feel sorry for him because like he probably just needs a holiday where he can switch off properly and I'd, as a Liverpool manager I'd, I'd hate to think mentally what what you know day in day out what you get put through you know you, you can't switch off even on holiday because you're probably thinking about tactics transfers staff whatever else is going on that you know the political side of stuff in, inside inside of business I think he loves football too much to be able to stop completely yeah and, which is he's had a rest like he like he did at Dortmund he said I want a sabbatical I want a break, and then someone said, "Like Liverpool's here, come and get it." I think he. I think you're right. I think he loves footy too much, and I think that you're right on that. Like the the mental fatigue that comes with being in a top job, but the point when you're that character, you never switch off from it anyway. Like think you know what I mean? Like yes, you 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 would you are unplugged from a particular club's demands, but he's not the he's the kind of fella who he'll have his time off but he'll be watching footy and he'll be thinking about taxing he'll be keeping himself fit and he'll be having got you know he'll never be able to turn off from football altogether and, and as soon as he stops he'll be inundated with offers from oh yeah exactly. the world as 100% well 100 yeah. but i look at it and it, it, the four-year thing is going to be interesting because I, and I'd, I'd love to know the answer and whether he and whether he said this somewhere or whether it's something you know there's a deeper reason behind it the general consensus with dorman was he kind of the job had run its course you know he couldn't go on to the next level at Dortmund because they couldn't financially offer offer him that he was he was always fighting an uphill battle against Bayern Munich and then they'd had that season where I think statistically you know in terms of all the, the metrics that you measure footy by apart from the goals and the wins that you get Dortmund had a disappointing season and he probably had to he probably did question whether it was the right time whether he you know they were going to start moving backwards under him. I, I, I just wonder if Liverpool have won. I don't know what, what's the best situation to keep Jürgen. If we win a major honour for the next four years, does he want to win another one? Or does he go, actually, I've won all and I'm going to win? Um, that's it. I don't know. What, what's your thoughts, Ben? It's all, well, it's like anything, isn't it? I, I, I reckon he's like, he'll he'll want to leave us wanting more. You, I think Steven Gerrard said this at the time of retirement. He said, I'd rather go with like you know when I feel like I can give something I can still give something because if I if I push it too far if I give it that extra few years you know this isn't this isn't a jib at Paul Scholes but I feel like Paul Scholes sort of played played past the point where he was actually at that level and and then suddenly then you the memory of you know you say Klopp you know stays for an extra couple of years and those seasons aren't as great suddenly that you know you know, you'd still remember what he's done, but the, the memory is a little bit tainted because, oh, you know, we finished outside the top four in that last season and, and you know, all those things come into, into, um, into account. So that's why I feel like he, he would want to move on having having done everything and, and not wanting, as you say, not wanting to just start to decline a little bit. And, I, I you know, so for me, it's a long way off. And I thought, to be honest, when he signed that contract, we wouldn't be having these conversations for, um, for a couple more years. Yeah. Um, but, but it are. takes, you know, but yeah, but here we are. Um, but, you know, if it comes to the end of 2024 and we've won a Europe, another European Cup, we've won another Premier League, uh, you know, we're not going to be grudging that chance to go on and do there's, something else. I there's think. unknown factors that we'll never, we can't possibly predict. Now, it's like when, when you try, when people try to predict what England's Euro squad's going to look like after the end of a Euros, and it, like, you're like, by the time four years later, you're like, who is he? You know, like, you, you, God remember him. You know, you don't know, do you, Dad, that there's, there's he, he, the, it might be he comes into contact with a new coach who just reignites his fire for trying to play a different brand of football oh, or the, the club, a the young club, player. The club say to him, come back in a year as like sporting director or something and not not be the, the man on every day-to-day um, business. Yeah. I, I'm more interested in the psychology of 
of the guy and and guys like him. I yeah. mean, Shankly, as I said before, he 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 retired and immediately regretted the decision, and used to go down to the training ground every day and had to be told to, to go away because he was no longer the boss. You know, yeah. um, and I can see. Um, Klopp, you know, haunting the the, the academy, you know, <laughs> if he was still uh, still around, you know, um, he's that kind of a guy, and he's only going to be at the end of his year sabbatical. He'd only be fifty eight, yeah, and that's pretty young for a guy whose whose whole life is football to give up football altogether. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously there's the international route, but that seems a, a little bit mundane to for a guy. I like think Bob. he'd ha- I think he would hate being an international manager. I it, it just not it's You'd not swindling it, your thumbs half the time. Exactly. Yeah, I just don't think it's in, it's involved. And of course I'm not. I, I, I think he said something similar before he signed the, the contract and like yeah, obviously if he does go, I think you've got to prepare for what for what happens next. I think the key to it is him telling the people above him or then coming to the decision of what actually does happen in four years' time. Like, I know four years is, is a lot of notice, but, you know, like I said, things might change if he is going to leave. Like, tell the club as soon as, as soon as possible so we can make plans forward to go and get the right person in because, you know, we've seen from the likes of, you know, an Arsenal, Manchester United, whatever else, you know, when someone leaves and you don't get, don't get the right person, you, you, you know, you then go, you can go on a, a massive run, run of downturn, can't you? And, and, and Liverpool, in four years' time, like we all want, will have had more European trophies, more FA Cups, more Premier Leagues in a locker. You still want it as a fan, you want to maintain that into the next person. Well, four years from now, Sadio, Salah and Firmino will be 32, going 33. So those, they could still, you know, the, and you, when you look at like what Barcelona are at at the moment, but, you know, that that's when Liverpool are, in, are entering into that kind of period. And in that regard, you've got you've got a, it's, it's it's appetite, isn't it? You know, it, it might be looking at going, okay, well that's done. That, that that was my Liverpool side. It's done. It's done now. I've had I've had a good run. I've had a great time. Can I can I replicate that again? That would be very tough. That might, you might consider that a one-off group of players or whatever. There could be like a, all of a sudden where Bayern Munich have got this wonder generation of German kids who are all ready to take the big goal. or any, and it could be any other club and that might go that might be an appealing prospect but the flip is you could look at it in, in, in four years time Brewster's 24 Elliot's 21 um, Nico Williams is 23 24 Trent's probably 20 what 25 26 by that point you might find that he's, he's already built the next side, and it's not you, exactly. not Joe. They'll be there. Yeah, but that's what <laughs> I mean. I, I, I can't see him leaving the club like Ferguson did, where they were basically finished yeah. and needing to rebuild. I can't see him doing that. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, it's the it's whether he feels he's got the energy for it to ca- to carry on, or whether he feels he's 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 done all he can do, and that might be like the ownership might be a factor in that, and what money's available to him, and you know if, if he finds that he's 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 fighting an uphill battle, which can happen, and that's not necessarily mismanagement. It's just that you'll you know if you, if you get a couple of big transfers wrong, all of a sudden you're making things become a bit harder for you, and it's and I like, his I like, appetite might I be. like the way we're all assuming that he'll stay for the next four years, that everything's going to be brilliant. Yeah. You know, whereas yeah. in four years you could end up being relegated. There's going to be all yeah. sorts going on, yeah. and we've just dismissed all that. He's going to, yeah. we're going to be brilliant. Might, for the the pandemic might all be dead in four years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zombies might rise up. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's the, by the way, it's the implication. I've not seen these quotes. It's the implication that if he wants to take a year break from football, that he would then come back. Is he just going to give it to no, Pep Linders for no, a year just, and go? I'll see. Good. I'll see you in twelve months. Up. He's yeah, going to okay. give up. Yeah. Um, he's going to yeah. finish his contract and go and have a break for a year before he decides what to do with his life. Basically, after that, no fair play. Unless he might be might be one of them, might want to ride off into the sunset and all that. But it's like anything. Look at look at Dag, Dag Leash is probably a good a good mentor in this regard. Like I, I, I know he. He went on for Liverpool, he had the break, he then comes back to Blackburn, has the success there, and then he doesn't really have the success with Newcastle. But then that's, I think, did he, I think that's, that was it. Did he have the brief thing at Celtic as well, didn't he, when he was like director of football with when Barnes was in charge or something like that? And But he, he then gives it up. But the fact that he comes back as Liverpool manager 10, 15 years later is a there's a there's a there's a hunger there, and I wonder whether it's something to go on like you know you're a long time retired. 
do you just go, you know, you're going to the point that you can't go on. If anyone's going to have that level of boundless enthusiasm, I'd, I'd put Jürgen Klopp on top of that list, really. A um, couple of super chats to round us up. Um, Stephen Somerville says, big upside for the hard work on a great documentary. Yeah, yeah. once again, just to remind everyone that they are three part documentary series on this season just gone uh, launches on Friday 8am on the redmentv.com um, three episodes a, a wonderful retrospective on a wonderful season um, yeah it, it promises to be absolutely sensational if anyone has watched previous documentaries go and sign up right now on the website and you get access to all of that uh, released on Friday Saturday and Sunday um, and uh, Stephen says as well uh, do you think we'll get a backup winger to Mane Salah this window or do you think there will be something else in the club who, or someone else in the club who will get that chance I, I I wonder whether I just I can't see us getting anyone mega Ben I think, I don't know if it's something you said earlier but it, it would be surprising to me if, if someone big came in in this instance but I still don't I still think we are short. I still think another lad with explosive pace to play wide would be it is missing from our squad setup at the moment. Yeah, I think um, I think Adama Traore would be perfect because he's very much an, an unpolished gem. I think you could probably get a lot more out of him. Sar's been the other one, hasn't he? Um, he he's been the other one linked, but forty million pounds, a lot of money. Um, I think Sar will move because I don't. I think he's too good for the championship. I think he'll move on. It's whether or not Liverpool are willing to pay that. Um, 100% going to end up at Everton. Do you reckon, yeah? Another million. Yeah. Um, I, I just think, I think the, the, problem with, the problem with talking about transfers is that the way Liverpool seem to operate is that we could talk about Traore and Saar all afternoon and then suddenly they'll go, here's this other guy that you had no idea existed five minutes ago and, <laughs> and now he's in a Liverpool shirt. Um, so I think I think that's that's the thing. I, and, and I tend to, this is why I'm not convinced that we're going to sign Thiago because there's so much about it. I'm hearing so much about it all the time, and at the moment, that's just not that's just not how Liverpool do things. And I just yeah. just wonder whether whoever we sign. So you know, before I said I'm I'm pretty sure that we're not going to sign anybody. The reality is I've got no idea because we could wake up tomorrow morning and somebody sign for us, and you just had no idea that it was coming. So it's very difficult to predict. Yeah, yeah it is indeed. It's um, yeah, th- th- there's. The, the the Thiago stuff you're right. It, it's got it's starting to bear all the hallmarks, Ross, of just because it drives clicks. You know, it's 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 just something for the press and and, and institutions to, to glom onto, rather than necessarily being a thing. There's been too many denials now, you know, and that doesn't necessarily indicate anything. But it's the, every time there's another layer added to the story. Oh, that's, that's believable, but it starts to feel like you know when you, you you just make a story more complicated to make it sound true. And now it's well, they're waiting for Brian to go out the Champions League, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is perfectly reasonable. I actually quite quite think the opposite. To be honest with you, I think if you look at where the links are coming from, it's quite typical of some Liverpool signings. I think if you look at a Salah, Fabinho, that there are probably others. Fabinho might have been another one. These reports are coming from people that are you know. Where, where Thiago's playing in, in Germany or, you know, Fabrizio Romano, you know, his, his, his hit rate's pretty pretty good. Whereas, like, Ben's right, Liverpool, no, nothing's happening. All these, uh, you know, echo journalists and stuff, I feel sorry for them because they're trying to get a story and Liverpool going, no, because that's Liverpool's stance of not doing anything. Building Fabrizio Romano have got no ties to the Liverpool Football Club and what they do and what, what, what they report, so why they come out with it. I think there probably is a bit of click stuff in there as well. But also, yeah, but build are the mouthpiece for Bayern Munich, which is which is a which is a factor, and and it's interesting that they I think they're spinning the story such that it's now Liverpool's fault if if if, if he doesn't sign, it's because Liverpool are pricks. Is how Bill are starting to uh, I think Bill are starting to shape the the, the narrative to protect it's Bayern. Liverpool. Yeah. Liverpool are right though. If you can, I mean, from what my understanding is, if you can potentially get him for free in a year's time. Why on earth? Why are we paying thirty million for him now? The 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 alternative to that is that if he was in contract, then he had four or five years on his contract. You'd probably be paying sixty, seventy million for him. But if Jurgen Klopp spoken to him, or somebody spoke to him, and he knows that he wants to move to Liverpool and he's not going to sign a new contract to buy Munich, and you can get a pre-contract with him in January, why would you? Why would you spend your thirty million? It, it, you know, it, it mm-hmm. seems. It, it? I'm sure it's not that simple. I'm sure yeah. it's not quite that simple. But it seems to me like it, that's how that's how the press are communicating it. You can that's either true. pay thirty million for him now and have an extra year of him, or you can wait until January, 
sign him on a pre-contract. They're having next summer for free. Chelsea, Chelsea are buying Ben. That's why. Oh, fine. Whatever. Yeah, like. good point. <laughs> Chelsea will throw 80 million at him. Uh, let's watch that, watch that squad implode where Frankie can't keep them on side because he's got 700 first-team players all of a sudden. Yeah, let them let them do what they do. Um, right, we're going to wrap that up there. If you want more uh, transfer stuff, obviously Red Men News is live on Mondays and Fridays. Um, we've also got the Reds Transfer Roundup Show, which if you are a member on YouTube uh, at Tier 2 or Tier 3, um, which is club captain and club legend, I believe. Um, you get access to the Reds transfer roundup show. So it's about 45 to 60 minutes talking through all the Bulls transfer stories, rumours, uh, innuendo, and obviously contract stuff and real stuff as well. That show, I'm going to be hosting that tomorrow. So I look forward to doing that one. Hopefully, see you guys all there for that. And uh, yes, don't forget to sign up as well to the redmentv.com. You get that show, you get the new three part uh, documentary series, and a whole host of amazing weekly content as well, both in video and in podcast form, covering every aspect of your mighty Reds. Um, Gents, thanks for joining me. uh, And yes, we will see you all very, very soon.